Hello from Shanghai. This is Chris. Welcome to another episode of China Currents, your weekly news report of what's trending in China. Let's start this episode with the Iranian strike of Israel. China on Sunday expressed deep concerns over the current escalation and called on relevant parties to exercise calm and restraint to prevent further escalations after Iran launched a military strike against the Israeli territory. Chinese experts believe Iran's retaliatory attack in response to Israel's bombing of the Iranian embassy in Syria is restrained. However, in order for tensions to de-escalate, it is imperative that Israel refrains from taking further provocative actions that could exacerbate the situation and lead to more damage for Iran. If Israel launches retaliation, it could escalate tensions and potentially draw the U.S. into another Middle East crisis, a situation the U.S. is trying to avoid, said Chinese experts, who believe that Israel's targeting of Iran may be a strategic move to involve the U.S. in the conflict in order to secure more support from Washington as its backing appears to be diminishing. Iran reportedly launched over 200 drones and missiles at Israel on Saturday night after Tehran vowed earlier retaliation for an Israeli strike on its Damascus consulate on April 1st that killed seven Revolutionary Guards officers, including two senior commanders. The next day, on Monday, China's top diplomat Wang Yi held phone talks with his Iranian and Saudi counterparts. Hossein Amir Abdullahian and Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud separately regarding the tensions between Israel and Iran, and a wider situation in the Middle East. Chinese experts emphasize that Beijing's recent actions demonstrate its commitment to playing a constructive role in de-escalating tensions in the Middle East and maintaining stability in the Gulf region. They note that China's impartiality in mediating conflicts in the region has earned support and trust from regional countries. Experts also point out that causality on the recent Iran-Israel conflict is clear. Noting that the current regional situation is very sensitive, Amir Abdullahian said Iran is willing to exercise restraint and has no intention of further escalating the situation. Next up, let's take a look at German Chancellor Olaf Scholz's visit to China. Chinese President Xi Jinping on Tuesday called on both China and Germany to view and develop bilateral relations from a long-term and strategic perspective, and work together to inject greater stability and certainty into the world. Xi made remarks during a meeting with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who concluded a three-day China visit in Beijing after leading a grand delegation to Chongqing and Shanghai. Against the backdrop of the EU subsidy accusations of Chinese electric vehicles and wind turbines, and the U.S. initiated overcapacity hype, she called for viewing the production capacity issue objectively and dialectically. The two leaders also had an in-depth exchange of views on this crisis in Ukraine and other international regional issues of mutual interest. A friendly atmosphere could be felt throughout Scholz's visit, during which he visited German companies' China plants. And had exchanges with students at Tongji University in Shanghai, an institute founded by a German doctor a century ago, which has close cooperation with Germany. Scholz's full and extensive schedule and his remarks on some sensitive topics show that the German Chancellor has maintained a strategic balance amid pressure from other parties like the EU and the US. Next up. China has just released its growth rate for the first quarter in 2024, which is 5.3 percent, well above market expectations, as the world's second largest economy has gotten off a robust start and laid the solid foundation for the economy to achieve the preset goal of growing by around 5 percent for the whole year. The growth rate, underpinned by solid growth in export and robust growth in high-tech industrial output, meant China's economy remains the healthiest among major economies and continued to play a leading role to drive global economic recovery. Chinese analysts said. The data was significantly higher than the average forecast of 4.6 percent by economists polled by Reuters, reflected the resilience of the Chinese economy and attractiveness of its vast consumer market and manufacturing goods, which also offers a strong rebuttal to some Western media's narrative of Chinese economy reaching its peak. As the statistics came out, China's top economic planner, the National Development and Reform Commission, announced a series of stimulus measures to further boost the economy. 
supportive efforts, including facilitating investment plans through the central budget and promoting additional treasury bond issuance, a part of the government's work plan to consolidate growth for the rest of the year. While there are lingering challenges, mainly due to a complicated external environment, inadequate demand, and weak social expectations for the economy, the country's economic development in the long run remains solid, with steady progress being made, thanks to the supportive policies and consumption upgrades, among other factors. Next up, purchasers were seen carrying luggage, exchanging name cards when passing by each other and rushing through the exhibition halls of the Canton Fair on Monday morning, the first day of the 135th session of the Chinese Landmark Trading Fair, which will run until May 5th. On the first day of the 135th session of the China Import and Export Fair, commonly known as the Canton Fair, over 60,000 global purchasers visited the physical exhibition halls. By Sunday, more than 149,000 purchasers from 215 countries and regions had registered to visit the 135th session of the Canton Fair, up 17.4% from the 134th session held in October and November 2023. With an exhibition area of 1.55 million square meters, the fair accommodates 28,600 enterprises attending the export exhibition and 680 firms attending the import exhibition. Next up, the U.S. has dispatched its top diplomats for East Asia to China, which analysts see as a move to test China's reaction after it elevated defense relations with Japan and Philippines amid escalation tension in the South China Sea. According to U.S. Department of State, Assistant Secretary of State for East Asian and Pacific Affairs Daniel Crittenbrink will visit China from Sunday to Tuesday. He will be joined by National Security Council Senior Director for China and Taiwan Affairs Sarah Barron. The two will meet with Chinese officials as part of ongoing efforts to maintain open lines of communication and to responsibly manage competition, according to the U.S. State Department. Kudenbrink's trip comes days after the first ever trilateral summit between the U.S. President Joe Biden, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, and Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. in Washington. Next up, the Commissioner's Office of the Chinese Foreign Ministry in Hong Kong's Special Administrative Region has expressed firm opposition against smears towards national security law in Hong Kong and its newly passed safeguarding national security ordinance. After the U.S. and Canada updated travel warnings to the city, citing so-called restrictions on civil liberties, U.S. Consulate General in Hong Kong asked the U.S. nationals to exercise increased caution when traveling to Hong Kong due to the arbitrary enforcement of local laws. The Consulate General said on Friday. In a strong rebuttal against such slander, a spokesperson of the commissioner's office said Saturday the travel alerts, in complete disregard of the facts, have maliciously tarnished Hong Kong's international reputation in an attempt to obstruct normal business and personal exchanges. The office stressed that Hong Kong's law and ordinance on national security are in line with the rule of law and international practices. With a clear definition of crimes, they fully respect and protect human rights. And safeguard the normal activities of foreign institutions and personnel in the region. Last but not least, China is emphasizing biosecurity as a crucial component of its national security system during its celebration of the National Security Education Day that fell on Monday. Customs in numerous cities have launched a series of events to raise public awareness about preventing the spread of invasive species. Customs in Lanzhou, Northwest China's Gansu Province, has carried out an event on Monday to guide the public to enhance their awareness of preventing invasive alien species through interactive sessions, according to local media reports. Customs are also popularizing knowledge of prohibited animals, plants, and their products through videos, brochures, and posters. According to reports, Beijing Customs has intercepted a total of 933 batches of prohibited imported animals. Plants and their products in the first quarter of 2024, of which 198 were considered exotic species, and all of which have been strictly disposed of in a safe manner in accordance with the law. Customs officers in Changsha, Central China's Hunan Province, have seized 106 kinds of foreign pests from trade channels, 74 kinds of foreign species from travel and postal inspection, and other channels in the first quarter of 2024. 
Well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching this episode of China Current. If you have any thoughts and comments about our show, please reach us at the email address below. I'm Chris. Looking forward to hearing from you, and see you next time.